All right, welcome to the Technically Short Podcast, where two best friends with uh, different per- different personalities talk about any topic under the sun. I'm Thomas Carney. I'm Sean Short. And the goal of this podcast is to give you our different but equal perspectives in order to help you on your personal growth journey with some inevitable comic relief. Okay, let's get into today's topic. So today, oh. we're... Today we're talking about analysis paralysis. Oh, that sounds like a huge word. I'm about to know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> um, so, just for the premise, analysis paralysis. If you analyze a situation or anything so much that you don't take, that you don't make a move. Oh, that's so good. And so this is this is based off the conversation I had what's today. Today is uh, July twenty second. So yeah, it would have been yeah, it was yesterday. Um, on the twenty first I met up with Pat Williams, uh, co owner of Project One Nutrition. Uh, yeah, we love Project One. <laughs> Call up, shout, shout out, shout out. out, we love you. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we met up for lunch yesterday and he um, he talked to me a little bit about um, how he used to be extremely susceptible to analysis paralysis when he was um, around our John and I's age. Um, he um, brought this up because of a lot of things that I'm personally trying to accomplish. Uh, he no, he notices. He, he didn't even notice it. He just said, "You are probably doing this," and he's right. <laughs> um, he was. Uh, a lot of the times with me, I'm just going to read some of the notes I wrote down here. I go, I go, I was thinking that I had to wait for others to take action before I did. My goal was to res- uh, respect authority, but uh, Pat said that that's fine, but uh, to be proactive in the things that I'm really passionate about. That is so good. And the idea, and then really brought that up is because there are some things, some people I want to disciple, some um, and areas I want to grow. But yeah, I was waiting on someone else to make a move first, so that I felt comfortable to make my to make comfortable and make my move. And like you can talk about that in any particular area. I'm pers- I, I'm personally talking about like life goals and things I want to do in my life. That I believe I'm being called to by God to do. And so like I personally believe I was like. I would analyze it to the point of, um, man, where was I going? You were talking about how you're about to analyze no, the goals. No, I, well, yeah, I, um, I would essentially get to a point. And this is something Pat brought up too, like, and, and he said he used to do this. Like, an, you analyze something so much that you're essentially trying to talk yourself out of it. Oh, like for me, like I. Want uh, like me wanting to start a business, I uh, uh, me wanting to start a business, wanting to do things, certain things in my leadership, uh, and with production at the church, um, I can I can be very susceptible to to uh, thinking about all the cons without thinking about the pros, or thinking about the pros but leaning on the cons. And being like, well, all these, oh, this could go wrong, and this could go wrong, and this person might not like what I did, and on and on and on, and essentially be like, okay, well, let's avoid that uh, discomfort, let's avoid the possible failure, and not do anything. So this is so good. And Pat flat out, with, and he's like, yeah, if you're passionate about something, like you take action, and I think there's. Some areas where I have done this and some areas where I still need to focus on that more. And I, uh, I think there's like, and Sean, you can chime in at any time. Like there's times uh, where I feel like there, like, especially with the instance of wanting to uh, respect authority, even if the authority wasn't like, it's not like solid, and, 100% solid and like um, there's... But I still wanted to make sure that they were, they, I know there's like kind of a hierarchy thing happening, so I'm like, I want to make sure that I don't step on toes. And Pat said that before I even said anything. Right. And 
he like why like if, if it's something that you can do like for this instance I want to disciple somebody um, that is under somebody else and Pat was like well if you feel like you can why not just ask, like ask them or ask me up with them in a different in a different group not to go against the other person but to actually push yourself forward in what you're aiming to do so you can actually you can grow and take that step and um see what god has for you in that area um so to me this is so deep because this is my entire life i think the only time i don't do this is honestly when i'm talking to somebody to like invite them to christ because in general i do this a lot so many girls i don't talk to because i i overanalyze it mm -hmm. i'm like okay yeah. if i if i I like her photo too. too much, she might think I'm a creep. Or if I go try to say something, maybe Tony, that was she, stupid. She, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's definitely stupid. But it's it's stuff like that, like I over I overanalyze everything. Yeah. Know. So like this is a constant issue. And before uh coming back to Christ, I had bad anxiety, but now yeah. I have no anxiety at least. But I still overanalyze everything. So, job situation, overanalyze it. I always do. Like, what I know I can do only because it's like, I don't want to ever step over authority. And it's the same thing with even a ministry. Like, God's called me to be a pastor and God's called me to preach and stuff. But, like, it's like I'm under ministers and stuff already. So, it's like, I don't want to overstep and be like, I want to preach because... I've, I know this is my calling, this is my purpose, and it's like, there's so many times I overanalyze, so I never send somebody like, hey, can I preach this, blah, 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 I never do any of that, because of the fact of so much overanalyze, even the girls I want to date, or want to talk to, I overanalyze it, I'm like, okay, maybe this is not the right time, I don't want to talk to her in front of her friends, because what if it backfires, in my mind, it's always a backfire, like, right. yeah. uh, if you say this, and she takes it the wrong way, and, and now it's like, oh, you, you were at the wrong setting to say it, or blah, 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 you asked her out, and it was like an IC, IC event, or like, you know what I mean, stuff like that, it's just like, Oh, I overanalyze all the time. Right. So can we talk about so since, since you brought up? Uh, yeah. Can we talk about something that we were talking about yet the other day about yeah. social media that we were talking? Yeah, absolutely. You're fine with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, because uh, to me, this is exactly what we were talking about the, yeah. the other day. Whenever Bro, this were, is deep, it's good. Where you, where you were like, this girl, uh, this girl blocked me on social media. Yeah. I liked her. So now, but then she must have, she must have blocked me because I like too many of her pictures. Yes, and, absolutely. And I, I that. and I was like, dude, for the record, it was four guys. If it, people are wondering how many photos, you have to have, <laughs> it was four photos. I figured I was not going to go past three, <laughs> but then on my thing, I didn't update my Instagram at that time. So okay. I, I didn't update it. So it, I liked three and then on my watch, it said like she liked my photo or something. So I was like, oh, okay, let me like one more to let me know that I'm, yeah. liking, like, I'm liking her back. And I was blocked at the four photo. And then like the craziest thing, the next day she must have unblocked me or something because we were following each other again. But, I just like, clapped. Because <laughs> there's no video, I have to say it. But uh, <laughs> the... the uh... The whole thing with that is just like I think social media really like it's one of the other reasons why social media like it's a great tool, but it shouldn't be used as a lifestyle as a lifestyle because that's a lot what a lot of people use it as, yeah. um, and like uh, or like attribute it as part of the lifestyle, and like I think to me social media like it's like is it's almost impossible to get away from the toxicity that even if you're not even if like there isn't toxic people on your social media, you still would deal with that toxic stuff of being like, uh, wondering, uh, cause you get that, you know, we get the dopamine hits whenever we get, you see that we get likes on our social media and the exact opposite happens whenever things like that happen. Like, yeah. like well, this person, I, I don't know what the opposite of dopamine is, but like, uh, or if like there is a thing that does that, but like, I know that you like, oh, you feel like this gut, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh, what the heck? And you're like, why did this person do this? Like why or why did they comment this on on my on my Facebook post or whatever? I I, I started to stop putting my own, like some like certain like stronger opinions out on um like Facebook and stuff a while ago because like 
I could not deal with people that, that deal with disagree with me, and I'd get mad and angry, and that would destroy me. So I just like I I will like maybe one day I was like maybe one day in the future I'll be able, like with my faith like I am putting things out in my faith. Uh, and by, it like, used to be the same with, way. With, like, so I what you're but saying. like it's right, you it, it's such a dangerous road to go down. But like going back to like let's uh, let's go bring back. it back. Let's bring, bring it back, back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's bring it back. But like um, after talking with Pat, like. One of the biggest reasons, like, I, I talk with the two um, people I consider um, mentors in my life, there's other people, but, like, two people I like to go to a lot for counsel is uh, Pat Williams and Pastor Ed Newell. And, like, um, as far as people that are older than me goes, I have a friend uh, who's younger than me that I go to for counsel as well. Um, but the, it brings me back, it brings me to uh, Proverbs chapter 19, verses 20 and 21, it says, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans of the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So, like, it, it's, it's, it's saying accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. And, like, you gain instruction, you get it from the Lord. But to seek good, there's, there's other verses about here specifically that say seek good counsel. Yeah. I was trying to find that one, but I... I guess I, I didn't, but, <laughs> but, uh, but like my dad used to tell me that from a young age. Like, and I had no clue why I was saying it. He just like Thomas, seek good counsel. Seek good counsel. Who are you talking to? Seek good counsel on this. Put it on the altar. Seek good counsel. Um, and it wasn't until I, I don't think it was until I actually lived on my own and started going and being surrounded by people that are actually good counsel. Um, when I started realizing what he what he meant when I was a kid, um, seeking good counsel, like whenever I want to know more about personal growth or I want to grow an area, I need somebody to kick me in the butt um, to tell me that I'm being stupid. Like I go to people. Like I I, I feel like, like or I, I like I don't know if this is the right thing for me to be doing. What do you think? Because I trust your opinion. Um, because I know that they're solid in Christ and that they're going to tell me things. Um, they're gonna tell me. Um, they're, they're gonna tell me outright and not and not sugarcoat, and that's what I appreciate. That's I don't want stuff. and like um, with Pat, like he well he flat out called. Oh man, my computer locked. Uh, he flat out called me out like on that, being like, "Yeah, you probably um, are analyzing things too much." I know, he goes, I know, because I used to do that. He goes, now, I just, if I set my sight on something, I do it. And I'm like, man, I can't wait to be like, I can't wait to do that. And I can't wait to, like, um, and, like, I like, in some instances, you can't be like, well, why wait? In this instance, like, why wait? Like, of course, there's still always going to be that inkling inside being, like, um, holding you back until you start chipping away at it and, and like, um, again and again and again. Um, one of this brings to mind uh, something I read in one of John Maxwell's books, and um, and also heard it on his podcasts. Um, he heard a speaker at one, at one point say, like, every night before you go to bed, you say, "Do it now, fifty times. Do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now." And then again, he said he would do it when he woke up fifty times. And it train and they go, it, 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 that trains the mind to um, whenever you're thinking about a situation that you could put off, immediately do it now. It would pop in your head if you do it, it, do that for like a week. And he he said he did that and he started being more proactive. And so like I like with me, that's the kind of the philosophy I take with a lot of things that are very sh that can won't take that much time, right? Like I should text this person because I'm thinking about them, or I should text them back because they just texted me. And I know I easily forget that uh, when people text me, so I'm just going to do it now. See, that's so good. But for my, my mindset, the only reason why I like fight this so hard is because I think of all the repercussions of what happens when I do that. Well, that's the point. Yeah, and like, that's the point. Like, um, it's the that's role the, that you, you know that those are possi you know that there's a still a possibility, yeah, but you but thing. you do it any but you do it anyway. Because you ever heard of the term "do it scared"? Yeah. Like, there is a lot of things that like, people want to accomplish in their lives, but they don't do it because they're scared. 
Yeah. And that's why people, so many people will just stay where they're at and they never reach their full potential because they're stuck and they um, and they like they don't pull themselves out because no one else can pull you out of that situation except for yourself. Other people can tell right. you. That's other, the craziest part. Other people can tell you, hey, hey, you need a, you need to get moving. You need to do this. Like, uh, do it now, uh, or be or be like Pat and be like, hey, you're analyzing too much. Like, just do it. And like when I came, when I got home yesterday, I immediately set up a group text and start and I started texting the, uh, te- texting the guy I wanted to do a disciple and a couple other people that he knows that he was more comfortable with it. And we have now we have a conversation going and. It was funny on the drive back from Moe's, um, where we went to where we went to eat. On the way back, after talking about the, that situation with uh, that situation with him, I did all, the the one group that we're pod that we're part of with IC uh, that um, me this kid or the guy are also a part of. Like, I left. I was like, oh, not even like out of the park. I felt like I was like just pulling out of the parking lot, and the pod started texting me, "Hey, when are we meeting up? What are we doing?" <laughs> and I'm like. Okay, good guy. <laughs> it's like, it's like that, was, that was uncanny. Um, not a coincidence there. But, um, but like, uh, so I just, like, like, when Pat tells me, right, like, I, Pat is, like, not just such a successful person, but, like, he's also, like, so, so down to earth and f- f- so firm in his faith that if he tells me to do something, I do it. Right. And... And, and, like, if there's, like, a doubt in my mind that maybe that's not the best thing for me, maybe that, that's up to me to think about and pray about and maybe talk, bring to somebody else, like, uh, Ed or, Ed, uh, like, Pastor Ed. Yeah, that's, I think that's 100% reasonable. I think that's right. Pat is a straight shooter. <laughs> but, yeah, like, for me, man, it's always overanalyzing. Even about jobs decisions, career decisions, all the stuff that I know I could do still overanalyzing and the hardest part is like trying to not lean on myself but also try to shoot what I need to shoot and not shoot when I don't need to shoot like you know what I mean yeah. like so going after the right position it's like okay what position God do you want me to be in because it's a yeah. hard thing to do to just be like all right I could do so much more but should I right now or is it or is it the same thing for the girl you like it's like should I shoot my shot? Because you shoot the shot at the wrong time and it, it's a miss. Mm. And sometimes that happens. And it's like, oh. So I'm always overanalyzing. So like, what I get from today's episode for sure is shoot sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> get well, good counsel and shoot. <laughs> say that again? Take good counsel and shoot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say seek good counsel. Yeah, you, seek. You, you, you you seek it out because if you don't have a mentor, then you seek a mentor out. Right. You don't just wait for the one to come to you. Right. And I got good mentors. <laughs> everybody knows your mentor. <laughs> uh, but uh, Pastor Brandon has a shout out for this episode. If you if you didn't catch that, but uh, <laughs> but like uh. But it, and no, and it's not shoot. Sometimes it's shoot when it shoot whenever whenever you're whenever you feel like taking that shot is aligned with Christ. Right. Oh, it, that's good. And like, if it's not aligned with Christ, that's the only reason the time you don't do it. Mm. If like, and if it, and that could mean if it's not aligned with Christ because of the action or because of how like your or how what your intention behind it is. Right. Um. But like, if you're if you feel in your gut that that's something you should be doing and you are aligned with Christ, it's something that Pastor Ed told me a while ago about a completely different situation, but it pull, but it tracks that tracks what we're talking about. He's like, he told me he's like, whenever I don't know uh, what to do in a situation, I God and I don't, I'm not sure what God's saying. Then I just listen to my, I, just, I listen to my gut, I listen to my gut feeling because if I'm truly aligned with God then my gut is too. And I should listen to my gut. And I, I, that, that's where, because that, that's the way, that's how you stop second guessing yourself. That's good. That's how you stop worrying about the what ifs, and what if this goes so bad, what if I fail? you like, you're, you acknowledge that. That's always a possibility. Failure's, a failure's always an option. 
And I feel, and, and like people say, failure is not an option. That I used to believe that, and that was toxic for my <laughs> life. But uh, <laughs> but uh, the like failure is an option. It's always a, uh, an option, not like that you choose failure, but it it always has the possibility of happening. And if it does, well, then that's when you learn the most. You you learn the most through failure. So like that that's like what something I am working on myself is acknowledging that if I fail that's actually a good thing because a it means I wasn't ready yet for the thing I was going for and b God still te- has more to teach me and the only way to grow uh, to grow to the point if you have big goals the only way to grow to the point where you're ready to accomplish that goal is like going and failing and, and going and failing and, and looking back on that failure and then learning to grow from it. Oh, that's what do you, like looking back like what did what was God teaching me through this failure because I still feel called to do this thing but I failed what did I learn mm. like that's like every like going back to our last episode every relationship you've ever been in has taught you something yes yeah, and okay. like it's and it compounds to the next one and then it compounds to the next one and some people need more lessons than others and some and like and, or people need the same amount. Of, like, there's, you know, same lesson, whatever. Like, everybody, it, it, I can't really go too far into that because uh, everybody is on, on their own path, on their own walk. But like, um, the, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I, I honestly think like, for me, analyzing its biggest issue was always rejection and failure. Yeah. And. But there's a time, and in some of it, it's not even just, like, failure or, or, um, it would be, like, stepping outside of authority that, like, you shouldn't. For instance, like, the preaching thing, right? So, like, I have to be, like, since I'm under somebody, I have to respect the authority they have, but also know that they're aligned with God, so then it's, like, when do I just like, hey, I I know this is filling. I'm alive with Christ. You're alive with Christ. Is this an opportunity for me? Or is it like, hey, you can't do this because of, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that I always wonder about. Like, so I, like my one of my pastor friends, he was like, why don't you just go ask um the preach? You know him too, his name, Sam, back in the day. And I was like, I was like, I couldn't, I would just wait for God to call on them and let them know that it was me, right, or whatever, to do something like that. And um, he said, isn't that being prideful, though? I was like, but in my eyes, I see it the opposite. But in his eyes, he was like, it's prideful because you're kind of like saying you, you can't do it unless, like, God calls them to hear me do it. You know what I mean? Like, to put me out there. And I was like... To me, I didn't feel it. It's prideful. I just felt it because of the authority. So analyzing, to me, has always been a, like, where is the right line to step to do mm-hmm. something? You know what I mean? And it's that's always what my biggest issue is because it's like, when do I ask? When should I ask? Don't ask? Do you ask? Questions is always like analyzing everything. Well, do you learn from asking questions or not? And you do learn. For asking questions. So why shouldn't you ask questions? Ever. Because it, it's almost like, you're right, you're right, you should ask questions. It just it feels like, when it comes to authority, it almost feels like disrespectful to, like, put yourself in a role that, like, I feel like it wasn't given to you. So. Well, then, then, that's why I just like wait on it. No, I get that. See, you know what I mean. I, I get what you're, I get what you're saying because I felt I I felt that too, and like um, and that's the response that you talk you 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 have you talk to God, you pray to God, and maybe like it, it could be that you're in a season a season that that just isn't for you right now, right? Or it, maybe he's like, or or and like if you go ahead and you do ask, and they say this isn't for you right now, yeah. And you respect their opinion, then like okay, like what can then maybe even ask like what can I be doing in the meantime? Right. Like, how can I be growing so if that does come one day that I can be more prepared than I am right now? Ooh, yeah, that's good. Like, there's 
So, like, I think, like, there's never a bad time to ask a question, and, like, there's, like, if you've, and if you've asked a question once before and you already got an answer for it, like, maybe ask a different question. But, like, uh, I think, like, I don't think there's ever a bad time, to, a bad time, I don't think there's a bad time to ask a question. And I, I've even, like, I, some people think it bit me in the butt one time when I, I forgot... I forgot Emily's name and I asked her flat to her face. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. And I was like, I, me, I don't care. Like, I was like, I'll ask. I, I want to know. I'm gonna ask. <laughs> like, that's just me. And like, um, some people, I feel like some people might think that's disrespectful. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not my problem. <laughs> 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 it sounds so arrogant, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it sounds, but like, it's just some, some people might, but like. Because I just feel like it, analyzing is good and bad at yeah. the same time. Analyzing like, is a good thing, but like you can overanalyze. That's the, yeah. point. That's the whole point of this uh, this episode. Yeah, and I feel like I overanalyze too much. I do. So I'm going to try to underanalyze some of the points and just try to go for some of the things, but... Yeah, it's, it's just rough when it comes to, like, when it comes to, like, authority. Because then it's, like, you have to have respect... Then you have to ask, like, what are the motives? Then you have to ask, like, is this in line with Christ? What does God want? I think now yeah. you're going through, like, okay, now I have to ask all these questions, wait for answers, and then take action. Yeah. And I feel like it's funny because this kind of turned into a coaching call. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I feel like you should just, like, I don't know, if you have a question on your heart and you feel like you want to ask, you want to answer to it, ask the question. Yeah. Like there's not like there's no only the only thing that's holding you back is you right now. That's and, true. And like there's like you you ask it and if and if you don't get the answer that you that you would prefer, well at least uh, well then you ask the question and now you know. That's and it, true. And it's like the like and again that goes into like people don't do things because of fear. And like because like even if it's even like. I feel like there's there's analysis paralysis, but then the analysis turns into fear, and then you talk yourself out of doing doing the thing, and that's and like um, and then like it kind of leads into and maybe not in your uh, in your case, but kind of leads into things like imposter syndrome, which I love um, hearing Tony Robbins talk on imposter syndrome when I saw him speak a couple of years ago, because he, he he was like, it's a load of BS. He goes, imposter syndrome doesn't exist. Because imposter syndrome is not imposter syndrome. It's just a fancy word for fear. Yeah. Fancy. It's a fancy phrase for fear. It's a label for fear. Just call it fear, and then you can actually get rid of it. That's imposter right. syndrome, like, how do you get rid of that? Right. How do you get rid of it unless you actually just acknowledge that it's fear and just leave it leave it at that? Like, whenever people like people are afraid that they aren't enough. That's what that's the quote-unquote quote imposter syndrome. And, like, um, I lo- unless, like... Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people don't. I, 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 everyone's susceptible to it. People don't do things out of fear, and one day you do think, and then one day you learn. Ho, ho, one day, hopefully, people you learn you learn to do things, even though you're afraid. Yeah, to me, it's just that hard line. I gotta learn when can I do something. You know what I mean? How do you, but how do you learn that? I guess you just gotta go out there in the deep waters. You and do test it. it. Yeah. So maybe I'll ask that girl out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll ask that, and maybe I'll. This Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's rough. So like, there's that's that's the thing. Like, what are boundaries? Like, what is this? Like, what is a good time? Is a bad time? And overanalyzing it. Will it be Just bad? do it, man. Hey, if you if you think Sean should ask, should, uh, if Sean hasn't done it yet, by the time this episode's out, and you think Sean to ask that girl out, you should uh. Add him on social media. <laughs> yes, bro. Like it's crazy. So there's that, and then the what? For the preaching thing, it's a little easier because it's like it's God's timing. I can just ask and see whenever that is, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to because I feel like that's gonna put me back. Like, cause what if God was already gonna have me like preaching like a month or two? And then I ask this question. Then like my name gets raised off the list to two months now because it's like prideful guy. <laughs> Overanalyzing. I know. 
Oh. And obviously, I can't just be like, stop it! <laughs> it's so good, but... How about just not do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's terrible advice, but like, just don't... Yeah, man, just stop being sad. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> just, there, you're fixed. <laughs> Happiness abounds. So good. That's cool. <laughs> I love it. But, uh, but all right, I think... Do you have anything else you want to, you want to bring up? No, nah, I thought that was good. Really good. No, nah, all right. I think, like, we jumped around a lot. But, like, I feel like talking about the... Like, we kind of stayed on the premise of analysis paralysis. And so, like, if you guys deal with that a lot, let us know. Um, at, at us on social media. If we have a social media page specifically for the podcast, you know, ask, uh, send us a message. Uh, by the time that this podcast is out, if we have a thing made already, but uh, if not, just mess. You can message Sean or I, uh, or you can share th- share this podcast on social media if you liked it. Um, give it a like. You can do that. Can, you can do that on. Absolutely. You can do that. You can leave it's a comment right. on Apple Podcasts. You can't do that on other platforms. <laughs> but uh, yeah, give us some comments on uh, Apple Podcasts. Get, uh, get leave us a re- good re- leave us a nice five star review. Please do. Um, and uh, I like what Dave Ramsey says. You've got nothing nice to say. Don't say anything at all. So, <laughs> all right. So with that, um, we will talk to you guys next time. Love you guys. All right. See ya.